the video Osprey Love Nest, made in March of 2014, was about the behavior of two ospreys at a nest before the female laid eggs. This video, Osprey Love Nest 2, Feeding and Fledging, will show osprey behavior at the nest after the eggs hatched. The nest is at the Bellhaven Marina in the Potomac River in Virginia, south of Old Town Alexandria. The ospreys built the nest on a piling which had been knocked sideways by storms during the winter. The ospreys compensated for the tilt when building their nest. Ospreys have been known to live more than 20 years. Female ospreys begin to lay eggs when they are three years old. Two-year-old females do not lay eggs, even though they might assist in building a nest. Three-year-old females typically lay two eggs, and older females usually lay three eggs in subsequent years. This pair of ospreys produced two young. It is not known whether the female at this nest is a three-year-old. She could be older and laid three eggs, but either one did not hatch, or it did hatch, but the nestling died. Nestlings are difficult to see right after hatching because they are small and stay low in the deep nest. The first egg laid by a female osprey tends to be the largest. The second egg is smaller, and if there is a third egg, it tends to be smaller still. The incubation period typically lasts four to six weeks. The young at this nest were probably born around the beginning of May. The eggs do not hatch at the same time. As a result, the older or oldest bird is likely to be larger and more aggressive and will be fed first. If there is not enough food, the adults would rather have one well-fed chick survive than to have two or three partially fed chicks perish. In this nest, the female gave each chick enough food, so both survived. For the first month and a half, the female osprey feeds the young. While she is feeding them, she eats a portion of the fish in order to keep up her strength. She swallows the bones and other parts of the fish that might cause problems for the young. Sometimes ospreys will regurgitate pellets with scales and bones, but they usually digest these parts of the fish. The chicks ingest enough liquid in the fish so that they don't need to drink other water. After about six weeks, the young begin to feed themselves with food brought to the nest by the male. The male comes to the nest to bring food. All the rest of the responsibilities for raising the chicks when they are in the nest belong to the female. The male usually eats part of the fish first before bringing the remainder to the female and young. He needs to maintain his strength as well. When not out looking for fish, the male sometimes would perch in a tree near the nest. In this scene, the male has just brought a fish to the nest. After he drops the fish, the two chicks squabbled over it. This footage was shot when the chicks were old enough to feed themselves. In osprey nests, older chicks tend to dominate younger chicks. The younger chick will often back off if threatened without there being a physical confrontation. The adults will not intervene. This confrontation seemed to be an aberration because there was little conflict observed between the chicks at other times. The adult male is on the right and the adult female is perched above him on the left. He will fly away and leave the female with the two nestlings. Ospreys do not clean their nests. When defecating, the adults point their backsides over the edge of the nest so they will not foul the nest. Here is the female again. The youngsters learn to do this as well. The female sometimes brings in clumps of mud or vegetation to cover fish remains and other detritus that accumulate in the nest. Ospreys will sometimes drag their feet in the water to clean off fish residues and other dirt. Feather cleaning and maintenance is important, and the young ospreys start doing it at a very early age. Ospreys raise only one brood per season. Their nests are in the open, so the female must protect the chicks from heat, cold, rain, and predators. Here, you can see her shading the two nestlings from the heat of the sun with her wings. Heavy rains can affect hatching success and whether nestlings will survive. During the evening of June 18th, a severe storm swept through the Bellhaven area. 
It caused a lot of tree damage on the shoreline close to the nest, and some of the branches became lodged in the shallow section of the river next to the nest. The ospreys were able to survive the storm, even though the faster flow of the river might have made fish more difficult for the male to find. Because the male is usually away from the nest, the female does most of the protecting of the young from potential dangers. It was sometimes difficult to understand what would set off her alarm response. Boaters and kayakers going near the nest did not cause alarm. Nor did this mallard duck and duckling. These Canada geese and goslings were not perceived to be a threat. But double-crested cormorants, who are generally smaller than Canada geese, sometimes elicited a violent response. Here's a cormorant perched a long distance away from the nest. When one swam to within about 40 yards of the nest, the female attacked it and forced it to dive three times before the cormorant eventually retreated to a safe distance from her. The female made a threatening move toward this immature black-crowned night heron when it was flying along the shoreline near the nest. She also went after great blue herons who came too close. It is possible that because the cormorants and herons are fish-eating birds, the female osprey regards them as competitors for food. But before the chicks were born, the ospreys did not mind when grebes, who are also fish-eating birds, swam right under the nest. Perhaps the difference was that when the grebes were nearby, there were no young in the nest. Here, the female adopts an alarm posture and gives an alarm call when a male osprey who is not her mate flies near the nest. She does not want the male osprey to harm the chicks or to mate with her. Ospreys also become very aggressive if a bald eagle comes too close to the nest and will fly at the eagle. Baby ospreys generally stay in the nest close to two months. The young are born covered with down. They lose the down around the time they become large enough to be seen over the edge of the nest. Adult ospreys have a hooked bill for ripping fish. The young ospreys also have hooked bills. As they get older and larger, the juveniles begin to look like the adults, but with some differences. They have light speckling on their brown backs. Adults do not. The speckling, which is buff edging to their feathers, will disappear before next spring. The nestling on the left appears to have a slight breast band, while the one on the right has a clear white breast. This does not help to identify the sex of birds. Some male ospreys have a trace of a breast band. Also, the irises of young ospreys are orange rather than yellow like the adults. You can see the orange eyes of the juveniles on the left and the yellow eyes of the adult on the right. By their second year, the young osprey's eyes will become yellow. Ospreys cannot have shifty eyes because, as is true for most other types of birds, they can't move their eyes in their sockets. Ospreys must move their head if they want to look somewhere other than straight ahead. Unlike humans, who have only one focal point when looking at something, an osprey can have more than one focal point. Moving their head back and forth can help them to use the focal points to triangulate on an object. This can help when looking for fish from a considerable height. The young start moving their heads back and forth while still in the nest. About a month after birth, the young begin to stretch their wings. In this scene, the putting of the wing by one nestling across the other's back does not signify affection, but rather that conditions in the nest are crowded. Eventually, the young birds try to exercise their wings more vigorously, getting ready for their first flight. This one is putting a lot of effort into an attempt to get airborne. With continued efforts, the youngster eventually rises a short distance.
A little later, the nestling got higher still. Even when the young are getting ready to leave the nest, the adult female still spends time making sure that all of the sticks in the nest are in order. When they learn to fly, young ospreys will leave the nest but remain close by. You can see this one perched on a piling by the pier a short distance away. Parents will bring fish to them for up to three weeks before the young start to catch their own fish. Young ospreys are not taught to catch fish by their parents. They do it by instinct. Sometimes the young will hunt together, which might help them to learn faster. About a week later, one of the young ospreys perched in a tree near where the storm damage occurred and screamed for attention. Note the hooked claws for grabbing and holding fish. You can see one of the adults in the background, perched in a nearby tree. People who watch ospreys at a nest can take time off to eat or rest or to process video footage. But the ospreys are on duty all the time, day and night, rain or shine, in cold and hot weather. These birds have to be very resilient and resourceful to survive, both the adults and the new generation they have successfully created. William Young's book, The Fascination of Birds, From the Albatross to the Yellowthroat, published by Dover, is now available.